welcome to Mama Do. Hope you're doing well. I've got an appointment with the neurologist today. I don't think I've actually physically seen her for, is it three years? Three years, yeah. Sure it's not four years? No, it's three. Three years with the um, pandemic and everything, the, my appointments just kept getting cancelled and pushed forward. But I'm quite happy to be going her, to see her today um, for her to do, I'm hoping she's going to do anyway, a physical check because I had quite a bad relapse on my right hand side where I lost the use of my leg and my arm um, and I wasn't able to go and see her. I was medicated but I wasn't able to go and see her for her to do all the normal checks that they normally do um, surrounding a relapse. Um, so that'll be good to do that. Um, I've got my husband in the car who's driving me. <clears throat> Um, which is always good on a long journey. But also, if you're ever going to the hospital, it's always a, um, a good thing to have someone with you for your memory. Because as we well know, MS and memories don't go together very well. So yes, you can write a list, but sometimes you need that input from another person to prompt you. Um, so there's, there's quite a few things that I was thinking about asking her. Um, one is the update of my new treatment that I'm on now, um, uh, Mavenclad. <clears throat> so I'm today having my last dose of my second week. So that'll be my first year treatment um, finished. But I really want to know if I have to have an MRI this year or the end of next year's treatment to see if the comparison with, with the lesions in my in my brain and my spine. Um, what else were we going to ask? Um, we've only got a short list of really important things, but uh, the other thing was to do with the fact that at the moment you've got retinal and eye socket pain, which doesn't go away with painkillers. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Um, so I get quite a lot of headaches, head pain, and pain behind my eyes. And um, no matter what, painkiller I take, whether it's ibuprofen, paracetamol or stronger codeine um, from the from the pharmacy, it doesn't tend to take it away. It will take the edge off a little bit, but it doesn't seem to take it away. Um, so I'm going to ask her about that. Um, I think the other thing was, was it sinuses? Sinuses, yeah. The fact that you've got um, recent time you've had repeated sinus infections. And we did read somewhere, didn't we? There was an article, was it on MS Medical News or something, about um, people who, sorry about the sun, um, people having MS, having links to sinus, multiple sinus infections. Um, so I'm not sure how true that is or whether it's just a theory, so I'm gonna ask her that. Um, and then the third thing was the really important one, which is the sensation of cold in your right hand. Uh, yeah, the, um, when I had the relapse on the right hand side, um, my leg seems to have cleared up um, fine. Um, my right arm is kind of okay. I'm still having problems with my right hand and my fingers. Um, but I also get a really cold sensation. So my hand, it's almost like my right hand doesn't warm up like my left one. And when I was having rehab with the a physio she said that she doesn't normally get people talking about cold sensations or um, sensory problems with with warming up of hands or if you go out into the cold and your hand seizing up with MS she normally finds that in stroke patients so I'm gonna ask the neurologist about that as well um, to see if she can shed any light on that um, and then the other one, which was um, to do with your previous investigations, um, colorectal, um, just to dispel any feeling that you might think that that's connected. Yeah, so um, last year I went to a colorectal clinic at the hospital <clears throat> because I had problems, with what I felt I had problems with my bowel. So, um, Every so often I get kind of a sharp stabbing pain um, 
and it, it's almost like a spasm and I have to really tighten up and stay still to try and get rid of that pain um, and it was hard passing a stool as well so I, I just because of everything that you hear about um, that type of thing went to get that checked out and that's all fine so the colorectal um, consultant said that everything's everything's fine everything's clean there's nothing there I had a fit test as well um, and that came back all clear so I don't know whether that's also to do with my MS because if it is there might be a case that she might recommend that something we can do about that as well so um, I'm gonna ask about that I think that's everything um, we're just pulling up into the car park now so um, we'll ask her all those questions and then hopefully we'll have some positive updates for the head and the, the bowels and all that type of stuff and um, yeah see you in a bit hey back from the hospital visit um, it's a few days later because I didn't get a chance to film the update on the same day um, but all good so um, it was good seeing the neurologist in person after such a long time. We have had phone conversations, but it's never the same as as actually speaking to somebody face to face. Um, so the first thing that she did was the physical check, which they normally do every single time that you go and see them. Um, I'll do another video about that to go through what they do, but you know, uh, pushing, pulling, strength, walking, um, sensation tests, that type of thing. So she said that she was happy, even with my right hand side relapse, she said that it wasn't too different than the last time, which I suppose is um, that's a really good thing. Um, asked her about um, the colorectal stuff. So she said to me that she doesn't think that it's caused by MS in in general. Um, she said that problems going to the toilet, like constipation, can be caused by MS. Um, she said that a, a lot of people, a high percentage of MS sufferers will suffer from constipation. So she said it might just be that what I'm suffering from is a difficulty passing stools um, and that's the sensation that it comes out in in my body. So I might just try and have a look at some other stuff that I can maybe do to help that. I know that the colorectal, colorectal consultant said that using anusol suppositories might help. Um, so I might go and get, because they're an over-the-counter medication anyway. So I might try and get those and see if those help. The head pain so the head the headaches that i get are quite frequent um a lot of them are when i get the pain behind my eyes they're more migraine style headaches and it's very very painful um the sensations where i get headbanding where i um where my head feels like it's been squeezed lots of different types of pain either across my head um, in bands all over at the same time but the the bit that's super 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 painful that's really not very nice is pain behind my eyes where those optic nerves just feel like someone's either got spoons in there or knives or something or their fingers behind my eyes but it's just horrible if you've ever experienced that pain it's really not nice. And like I said before, over the counter, paracetamol, ibuprofen, ibuprofen and lysine, codeine, cocodamol, doesn't take away that pain. It will ease it ever so slightly, but it will not take away that pain. And she said to me, it all depends on how often you experience it. So. She said that she could give me some medication, which she has, to help with that pain. Um, but she said that if I was only experience it, experiencing the pain in short bursts, say one day out of a month or something, she probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, and 
she also said, which was interesting, to try and not take as many paracetamol, although it's safe to take. <coughs> try and not take as many paracetamol and ibuprofen that I'm taking because your body gets used to that type of stuff. And especially things like codeine, you probably have heard it before, that codeine and cocodamol can cause headaches the more you take it. So that's like a vicious circle. You, you're taking the tablet to stop you from having head pain, eye pain, wherever your pain is. But then in turn, if you take too much of it, it will cause more pain. So obviously you're not onto a winner there with that one. So for head pain, she gave me a tablet called, I've got them here actually. They're called Duloxetine, which is an antidepressant. So I'm, I'm still deciding whether or not I want to take that medication. Now, if you've watched some of my videos before, you know how cautious I am about taking medication. Because of all the side effects, your, your, your body in itself is not meant for man-made medication. Um, and sometimes, not in all cases, but sometimes it can do more harm than good do more harm than good sometimes um but she did say to me because another question that I asked her was the the heal up uh progression of my right hand side because although my leg is kind of okay now my arm's kind of okay but the my my wrist my hand my fingers are not that strong the coordination of them is not that great and I do get strange sensations in my hand. So my left hand, if I do this, is fine, it feels like skin. In my right hand, if I do this, it feels like I've got a wad of sandpaper in my hand and I'm squishing it up. So that's what it feels like. My skin feels like sandpaper. Um, it also feels very stiff, even though there's a, there's a slight difference, but it feels very stiff and my fingers don't kind of coordinate the way that they should if I'm trying to do things. One of the things that I explained to her, and she said that I explained it quite well, was that if I had my hands in my pockets and I had the same amount of things in my pockets, for example, if I had a coin, a button and a bead, in both pockets, in the right pocket and the left pocket. If you asked me to get the button out of my left pocket and the button out of my right pocket, I would be able to feel the difference between those items with my left and pull out the correct item. In my right hand, if I put my right hand in my pocket, distinguishing the difference between those three items I wouldn't be able to, to do it. I would. It would be a random pick. I would randomly put my hand in, feel around and pick out an item. Um, I can't distinguish the sensory difference between objects that I can't see. Same with example, if I have my phone in my hand, if I walk upstairs with my phone in my right hand, but I'm not looking at my right hand. By the time I get to the stairs, I would have. By the time I get to the top of the stairs, I would have dropped my phone. But if I take it up with my left hand, it will still be in my hand. So there's massive sensory issues with that right hand. Now we've got a dustbin man coming outside. Brilliant. Um, okay, so I'll try and uh, finish quite quickly. Um, the good thing is about this medication is that she said it's kind of like a double whammy so it will help with the head pain and the optic neuritis, optic neuritis pain and it also benefits from um, people with MS who have sensory issues. It's also a medication that they use for people with diabetes who have um, pins and needles in their feet and other sensory issues with that. 
Um, so they use, although it is an antidepressant, it is used in other patients with other issues to help pain with things like migraine um, and, and things like sensor, sensory issues. So she said that it may help both things. Um, I did ask her about uh, restless legs as well because periodically I do have um, restless legs in the evening typically like everybody does when you're relaxing or when you're trying to relax or when you go to bed it literally like a click of a finger comes on and you don't want to stop moving your legs you've got to move them around constantly um i have found that massage helps um but she did say things like magnesium do help um this medication is nothing to do with um, RLS um, so I might get some magnesium to try that um, I'm not sure there's anything else um, oh update on my um, mam and clad treatment so she said that she was happy with um, what I've experienced so far and what she's going to do is she's going to arrange an MRI for six months time to just have that scan and compare it to my previous scan before the medication. Then what she's going to do is she's going to arrange for another scan six, month after, six months after that to compare that one, um, just to see if there's any new activity, any activity on old lesions, um, any reduction in lesions, which I'm not sure that can happen. Um, although I have read other people on Facebook groups saying that their neurologist has said that their lesions have reduced in size. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I think I think that's it. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, if there's, if there's anything that you, as per usual, if there's anything that you feel I haven't talked about or you feel like there's something that you want to know that I can give you information about, let me know, um, put it in the comments, drop me an email. Um, I do have a toddler, so I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, He's very demanding, so I do um, <laughs> do try and get back to people um, as soon as I can. But I know that some people have waited uh, a little bit longer than usual. Um, but yeah, so that was the update. All positive. Um, glad I'm going to get a scan in six months' time for that monitoring of the Mavenclad. G glad that um, she's been able to give me these for my um, chronic pain in my head and behind my eyes and hopefully it will help out with the sensory issues if I decide to take it. If you have had experience with this medication, duloxetine, let me know your experiences, let me know if it's helped you, let me know if you've had any side effects. Um, that would be super, super helpful to me because I don't know anybody who's taken this medication before um but that's it so until next time stay healthy 